everybody, it's Kathy Champion with Random Acts of Crafting, and I would like to welcome you in my craft room again today. Um, I had a uh, comment from a subscriber, and her name is Tracy, it's either Greet or Crete, um, G-R-E-E-T. So, um, Tracy, I hope I didn't uh, totally butcher your name, but... Um, Tracy had requested that I have any ideas for masculine birthday cards. That is always a problem for us as crafters. There's so many pretty things out there to decorate cards for the ladies in our life, um, our friends and, and mothers and sisters and aunts and um, people like that. But we have a hard time with those men in our life. I do have a couple of ideas. Now, you are going to need some equipment in order to execute these. One is, um, this is a card that I think is very masculine. Now, this particular one was not a me meant to be a birthday card, but just like an encouragement card. Uh, and this was done with Maymay's stamp set, Walk in Love. And it has um, some scriptures, because this was her scripture uh, stamp set of the month. Um, a few months back, I can't remember exactly what month it was, but I will link that stamp set in the description below. Uh, and here, here is the stamp set if you're not familiar with it. And this particular stamp set, uh, as you can see, I have the shoes off because I did stamp those. And I actually colored them a little bit different here. But here, I, I kind of did them in a... In a a three-tone and here I just used a two-tone but um, you can do them in any color that you like and you do not have to use the sentiments you can just do the the shoes and which makes it very masculine um, I did this background Maymay made it dot com I can't take credit for this background because Maymay did a video on doing background stamping and I got this idea from her and I used two of her stamp sets but today I only brought out one and just to show that you can do this card I stamped this earlier on a piece of the lunch bag cardstock this is the Brutus Monroe cardstock and I cut my piece at four by five and a quarter and I did two of them because I'm going to actually bring y'all along with stamping this to show you how to do it and I'd use the relic uh, stamp set which is this one right here and as you can see, it has a lot of textures, um, just really designs that makes it really neat to stamp out these designs on and make our own background. And I thought doing it on that lunch bag uh, and then putting it on the black really made a nice masculine card. Now for my husband, I did a card for him for Father's Day. Now, he's not the father of my children, so I usually make him like a best husband type card for Father's Day. I want to acknowledge him as being a good husband as well as a father. But um, this one, I actually used a set of dies that I have that are tools. These were cheap dies that I purchased online when I first started crafting and I didn't realize that I was supporting overseas um craft uh, tool makers. I don't do that any longer, but this is one of the sets that I had purchased, and I did get it on Amazon. If anybody's interested, I will not link it, but if you want to check Amazon, that's totally up to you. But what I did is I cut these out first with some uh, silver, metallic silver paper. Then I went back and cut it in black. And what I did is I cut the black off to make it look like the tools had the little uh, rubberized handles on them. I thought that was a cool touch. And then I just cut um, some red with black polka dots. I put that there like it was the, the board, the pegboard that they were hanging on. And I stamped with May May made it a uh, stamp set called uh, Nailed It. This stamp set is so cute and you could actually pr um, stamp these out on um, white cardstock and then color your tools in or you could stamp them on black and accent them with silver. It totally however you saw fit to do it but I thought this was such a cute stamp set um, 
and even though it doesn't have happy birthday on it, you can always add a happy birthday sentiment and make this a happy birthday card. Uh, and I won't show you the what I wrote in the card, but I said when it comes to being the best, you nailed it. And I put the nails around it and two hammers. And he, he really liked this card. He thought it was very cute. Um, and he, he really did enjoy it. Now that's another one. Now this one here is totally a Maymay. I take no credit for this whatsoever. I'm not going to show you how to make this card. But again, as you see, you could use that relic stamp set and stamp out your pieces. And just by using a little bit of embellishment on it, you could come up with this card. I haven't used this card. I have this green piece to go inside. Um, but I just wanted to kind of try Maymay's... Um, take on this and that's that's basically what I did. But those were the ideas that I had for the the may may make it I mean the masculine uh, birthday card. So I thought what I would do today using the relic stamp set, I'm gonna pull out exactly what I'm using, the walk in love stamp set, the relic stamp set and a birthday. I have two birthday stamp sets. Both of these are May May Made It. This one is called Birthday Wishes. It has just birthday sentiments on it. And then this one right here is really cute. And I taped the back of it to my to my um, acetate because we have ideas here of how to layer these stamps. And so I wanted to keep the backing off of the stamp set for that reason. But this is a really cute one to do the happy birthday wishes on. I love this one over top of this. You actually stamp the happy birthday first and then in a different color you go back and stamp this over it so it looks like your hat is living off of the side. You've got these cute little pieces. There's just so much you can do with the stamp set and I do love it. Um, but what I am going to show you how to do today is one is the orientation of your card. Now if you want your orientation to open um, like this. If you want it to open like this, you're going to cut your cardstock in half like this. Let me move my inks over to the side so I can make sure that I'm in frame for this. But you are going to cut that card base in half this way. But now if you want that card to open, let's see if I can find the other one. If you want it to open like this, then you're going to cut that you're going to cut it in half this way. I hope that makes sense. It depends on your orientation um, the same way. If you want to do a card this way, you would still cut it in half cutting down the 11 inch the 11 inch side. You would cut cut it in half with that long part in your trimmer like this. But if you wanted it to open up and down or sideways, then you would put it in this way and cut it in half. So it all depends on the orientation that you want. I'm going to do this one done with it in half because I think everybody knows to cut it this way. But a lot of times we miss cutting it in half on the 11 inch side. So that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to cut the card base first. I had a phone call to come in and it was my youngest daughter. But we are back right where we left off and I was telling you about cutting the cardstock to get the correct fold. So for this I'm going to cut on the 11 inch side and I'm going to slice it in half which is at five and a half. Um, half of 11 is five and a half so we're going to get it right here to where we need to cut and then we're just going to slice it and now this is going to make our, our card base. And we're going to score it on the long side at four and a quarter. You're basically doing the same thing but you're doing it um, in a different orientation. So before you would um, cut it in half the long way which was on the four and a quarter line um, or yeah on the four and a quarter line because half of uh, eight and a half is four and a quarter. So uh, and then you would score it on the five and a half. Um, so we're going to score this Half of 11 is going to be five and a half. No, I'm sorry. Half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. So we're going to score right here. And this is heavy cardstock. This is the Brutus Monroe and the color Raven. And uh, really good quality of cardstock. 
um, I can't stress enough if you if you get used to using the better cardstock it's going to be really hard to go back to um, some of the cheaper brands they don't cut well a lot of times you'll get frays on your paper even though your blades good it's not your blade it is your your cardstock so um, just thought I would throw that out there all right so now that we have this um, card base done I am actually going to take you through the process of making this piece with your stamps now I, I picked out three colors of my browns and these are the VersaFine Claire inks and they come in these beautiful colors uh, and I think I'm gonna arrange them like this and this is acorn this is pine cone and this is falling leaves and we are going to ink up some of our stamps so I am going to pull a few blocks over here like so and let's get my little inking tool which is nothing more than cardstock and a Ziploc bag. I did cut the cardstock down just a little bit so that it would fit in here well and it works wonderful. There's also uh, another stamp set. Um, Relic is not the only stamp set that May May carries. She has a larger stamp set. Uh, I think those are six by eight and these are four by six. Um, and it has a lot of different designs in it as well and it's called uh, patina uh, so if you decide that you like this technique and you want to pick up more stamps that would be another option and you may have some stamps in your stash that have um, you know just just designs nothing more nothing less than just um, designs that will work really well with this um, kind of project so again I have this cut and I have it cut at uh, four by five and a quarter so that it will fit on our bit on our card base so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull off willy-nilly some of these um, stamps that I want to use and I'm just going to attach them to my my blocks and let's see I think I want to do this one so we may have to take some off and, and come back and kind of regroup on this, but that's okay. Um, I just basically wanted to show you the technique. Uh, and if you follow May May, you will have seen this uh, technique of, of stamping. And it's not anything that's relatively new. It's just a way for you to make pattern paper out of your plain cardstock, which I think is just so neat. So I'm going to ink that up. And I'm just going to go off the sides. You want your patterns to run off the sides of the paper. That's why I needed this under here. And I'm using my bigger stamps first because we can stamp around these. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting them down at different angles all around the paper. And I think I'm going to do one right here. And now we're going to go back as we go. We're going to fill in. Um, I'm going to pull my stamp cleaner over here so that I can kind of rub these off as I go. A little bit of squeaky clean. If you do not have this stamp cleaner, this is the best tool. Um, you can just spray your squeaky clean on here and clean your stamps so quickly and so easy. Um, I love it for that purpose. And I usually keep a microfiber towel like this. And then I just wipe my stamps off like so. And that's ready to go back into the package. Um, just, a good, just a good way to uh, clean your stamps when you're in a hurry. Now I'm going to go back with this little one in the same color. And this is just the little... Um, and I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm just going to put splotches of it just every here and there. Just a, like a little droplet and you don't have to be fancy with this there's no real technique in it you just basically have fun just have fun and throw some ink down and let's see we're gonna we're definitely gonna come back with these stamps um, I'm gonna change my color now and I'm gonna go to the pine cone that was the acorn and this is pine cone and I think this one's gonna be a little bit darker I'm gonna get my stamp my inks over here where I can really ink this up without reaching across. And that looks good. So now we're just going to go in and put splatters of this down. 
one off the edge of the paper. Now you are going to get ink underneath. That's my daughter again. <laughs> again, I do apologize for the interruption, but anyway, um, this is uh, where we're at. We are still stamping. So we just finished off with the pine cone. Now we're going to go to the um, falling leaves. This is our darker, I believe, of our three inks. And this one will almost look black on this paper or this cardstock. And see these these are so cute. They just look like somebody dropped a little splatter of something and it went everywhere. <laughs> I love the stamp set. It is so nice to be able to make your own cardstock when you need to. And uh, I think what I'm gonna do is maybe right here we'll just put a little a little dot of it. I'm going to clean this one. I think I'm going to go back. Well, you know what? I've still got some other ones. i got some more of the stamps on here. So we're going to get, we're going to pick up another, um, another one of these. Maybe, maybe this one. This one looks interesting. And I'm going to put that one back on the stamp, on the, on the, acetate so I don't lose it and I think I'm going to go back in with the acorn. The acorn gives you that um, the lighter really pretty brown so we will we will go with this color. Um, let me turn my fan on off because I can see that it's making my lights look a little bit oops just a little bit funny so we need to not have that movement with our lights that can be a little distracting to what I'm doing. All right, I'm just going to come back in in my any empty place that I have. I'm going to just kind of put down a little bit of this color. And you really don't even have to think about this. You're just filling in the open spaces. That's a little bit open. And you know, with this, you don't even have to worry about um placement as far as getting it perfect because everything's just kind of willy-nilly and I think I'm going to go with one more let's see maybe this one And I think what I want to do with that one is the darker, or maybe the pine cone. I'm so indecisive when it comes to stuff like this, but and and I think sometimes I do overthink it, but um, I just always want it to look nice. So again, I'm just going in any place that I see some open, and this is a great one for doing the open because it's kind of indiscreet, I think. So we're just going to fill in. And maybe one right here, and I'm going to call that done. Uh, you don't want to overdo it, but you definitely want to have all of your areas filled in as much as possible. So, we will, I'm just going to scrub these stamps off a little bit and just lay them over here, and then I'll clean them up after, after I finish. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my card base. I'm just going to lay it right there for just a second, and I am going to get a wet wipe. That's if I can talk it into coming out. And then I'm just going to take this and I'm going to wipe my ink up. Now, if you have, this is the VersaFine and it, it does um, have a little bit more staining capabilities in it. So if you have where it doesn't look like it's coming up, my go-to for cleaning my, my ink blocks and this paper is just hand sanitizer. So I'll just bring over my little hand sanitizer guy and work the sink off of this. Now it's not going to hurt for this to be stained because it's it's just plastic but if you do want to get the ink off I have found that alcohol which that's all hand sanitizer is is usually my best go-to and I can usually get most of it off of here just with a little hand sanitizer. And I don't know if you know this but hand sanitizer is really the best thing to clean your cell phone 
uh, your screen of your cell phone. I take a little bit and uh, squirt it on it, and then I take a microfiber towel or sometimes a paper towel. I've even cleaned it with the tissue when I was out and about. I'm a little obsessive when it comes to my cell phone screen. I can't stand for it to be dirty. And again, that's just one of my idiosyncrasies. Now, if you if you lay this towel to the side, this little wet wipe, do not use it on your stamps because you do not, never ever want to put alcohol on your stamps. You can clean your stamp blocks. You know, you can take your um, thing off and clean the ink off of these with the alcohol. In fact, that's what I clean mine with. But I never ever let alcohol touch my. Um, my photopolymer stamps or even the acrylics or any any stamp uh, I don't even put it on my wooden block stamps okay this is all clean as best we can get it it is a little stained right there and I'm wondering no it didn't go through I thought maybe it might have gotten torn and went into the paper but it's not it's definitely on the plastic but I did leave this for quite a while because when I got that first phone call um, I had to leave my craft room for a little bit and uh, so that got a chance to really get in there but it's okay we're just gonna let that dry now and uh, I'm gonna I'll put these stamps up in a little bit Okay, so now that we've got our our mat for our card, we are going to grab our card, and this is going to live right here on it. And see how pretty that looks against the black? I just love that um, craft colored with this pattern on here. Now, the other thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a piece of um, black cardstock to punch out, and I have this... Um, I think this is a paper studio it is and it is a oval um, punch and I am going to punch this out uh, and I don't have the size punches I need for the other um, shapes that I need so I'm going to actually use dies for those so if you can do it either way if you've got punches you can grab your punch but this is a um, three inch a uh, three inch oval, scalloped oval so uh, I don't have as many oval, scalloped oval punches as I would like to have. Um, let's see if we can get that to, to go. Sometimes with this heavy cardstock, they are very hard to punch. So that's another thing too. If you have trouble with your hands or anything like that, you might want to um, use a die or something else. Okay, so we got that done and. Now, this is the way I store my dies. Everybody has their own system, but this this works for me. I have the um, photo boxes that you can buy at Michael's. I was looking to see if I had one here close by where I could grab it and show you, but I don't. But anyway, I have boxes that I made these little makeshift folders down. I put a tab on them, and I put what was in it. These are all my dies, and these are all of my ovals. So when I open this folder or when I go to the box to pull one out, I pull out my ovals because I know that's what I need. Now, we're going to need a white one that will sit inside of this. And see, that is about that size, so we need one just a little we bit. Know, well, we have been um, known to change our mind with some of this stuff. So I'm going to bring out my little cuddle bug and I'm going to see if I can sit it like this so you guys can see it. And I'm going to open up my, my plate and I'm going to grab my other plates. I don't need the embossing ones so we'll leave those down there. Now I am going to put my shim in again. This is my A plate. And again, a shim is nothing more than a piece of cardstock or something just to give you a little extra um, thickness so that your dies cut really well. I'm going to put my C plate on there. And then I'm going to lay down my white cardstock. And I'm going to grab this die because this is the one that I want out of the white. And then I'm going to take a B plate and lay over top of it. I do have my B plate upside down, but I, I'm doing that for a reason. I'm trying to push out my my little bow that I've developed in it. And we're just going to run this through. And I think one pass through here is going to do this because it is rather tight with that uh, shim in it. Okay, so I'm going to pull this off. 
And this is what we have. And there's our little piece cut. And then that's going to live on top of this. And this is actually what we're going to be able to stamp our sentiment on. So if we're making this as a birthday card, I would definitely put a happy birthday here. And let's see, we'll move that die over here because we're done with him. And now we need to put our plates back in. And our cardstock. And then this die. And if you see what I did, I'm trying to get as much off of this, not using as much of the paper, but um, accessing the side of it where I'd already cut. So then I can actually cut this off right there and st still have a good size piece of cardstock. So I'm always thinking on how to save paper because your paper is not a cheap investment. I spend a lot, I'm gonna have to turn this around because this does not wanna go through. Maybe I don't need the shim on here. Let's take the shim out and see if it'll work a little bit better. Okay. Yeah, I'm putting it, putting this down right there. I'm going to pull it out enough so that I can get my plate completely over it. And then, yeah, see it's going through much better now. Okay. And that cut out perfect. Now I do need to punch these little holes out because you can see it has the little hole, the little stitching around it, and it did not um, it didn't appear to get those all out. But that's not a big deal because all I'm going to do is take my little pokey tool, and that's what this tool was actually meant for. Even though we use it for so many other things, we are going to punch these little holes. And I also have a brush. Sometimes you can just run this little brush over it, and it will do it. But these are such little tiny um, dots or stitch lines that I just want to make sure that I get them all out just perfect, just like this. Okay, I think we got them all. It looks good. So we're going to lay this over here. And I'm going to put my dies there so I know where they're at and make sure I can get them put back where they need to go. And then we can put our little cuddle bug up because I think we're done with that. And look at all my little dots that came off. <laughs> this is my little um, my little ladybug. Somebody sent May May one of these to clean her desk with, and uh, she she told us that they were available on Amazon. So I went to Amazon and I found it. And it is the cutest little thing, and it cleans up so well. It just runs on a, a double A battery. But if you got little pieces of anything like that, it just will pick them all up and you've got a nice clean surface and you can put your little ladybug back over there and you're all good to go. All right, let's see. Now since I had already colored the shoes, all I did was stamp these out and you can stamp them on white cardstock and that's what I did. And then I took my Nuvo alcohol markers and I chose three different colors. This was a darker, this was a medium, and this was actually the lightest color in the orange. These were natural browns. So all I done was colored in the shoes, and I don't think, I was going to take y'all along for that, but I think most people know how to, how to fussy cut and how to um, um, color. So, and I didn't do any shading on this. There was no shading. I just made a flat um, colors. And I thought they looked so cute living on this little um, die right here, this little die cut. So we are going to find a happy birthday to stamp right here. And I don't know if I want to do, I don't think this, that one's not going to fit. The happy birthday by itself will. I'll tell you what, this, let's use this. I think we can make that one work. I'm grabbing a big block because my other ones all have um, stamps on them right now. So I am going to grab my Versa, Versa Fine Onyx Black. This is my favorite go-to ink for my sentiments. And we're going to ink this up. And this stamp has been used quite a bit, so it doesn't need to be seasoned. It should give us a really good impression. So I'm going to get this right here, and I hope I'm in frame so y'all can see. 
Now when I stamp, I will get it over top of it and I'll hold it up until I know it's just where I want it. And then I just sit it down. And then I'll just put my fingers on the top of it and just hold a little pressure against it. Do not wiggle. Wiggle will give you shadows. Just hold it, hold it. And then I'll let my fingers up and just let it sit there for a moment. What, what it's doing as it's sitting here, that paper is pulling that ink off of that stamp. And the more that it pulls it off, the much crisper and, and dark image you're going to have. So now I'm just going to raise it up and pull it off. And isn't that beautiful? So there's our happy birthday. You know, I'm not happy with this because it cut off a little bit there. So I'm going to punch that one more time. I didn't have it in there quite far enough. So I think I'm going to go up like here. Okay, that's, yep, that gave us a good punch. Now, this is going to live right up here in this corner, kind of, uh, kind of, um, catty cornered or kitty wonkus or however you want to say it. Uh, down here in the south, we have a lot of different little terms that we use for different things. <laughs> so, we're going to put the happy birthday right there. And then we're going to take these shoes. We're going to put this right here. But I want, I'm going to glue this down flat. So let's go ahead and get some art glitter glue and put this down flat. I do want some dimension on here, but not not a whole lot. If you're going to be mailing this card, um, you definitely want to keep it as flat as possible. Although I do love a card with dimension. Now I'm just going to drop this. I want it about a quarter of an inch. And that looks really good right there. And then these I want on dimension. So I'm going to turn those over and I'm going to get some Scotty or my Scotch um, tape. And I have a couple little pieces that was left over from, the, I think, the bride card that I did. So I am going to pull these up. And I'm just going to put those down right there. Now, again, I'm going to need some more little pieces. So oh, there's a piece. I had some stuck on my tape. Now that's what you do if you got little pieces. You just bring them up and stick them on here. Then when you get ready to use it, you will feel them when you're feeling for the edge of your tape. So um, I'm just going to cut a small piece. Because we're not going to need a whole lot, as you can see. The, you don't have a whole lot of room on those shoes. But we do need some little, little pieces like this. Let's move this up so y'all can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to put a piece right across the bottom there and maybe another little piece right here you know when you're making a card for somebody you want it to look nice and you don't want it to come apart so I err on the side of caution when I'm making something like this for someone else and uh, I will put extra tape extra glue because you don't want it to fall apart. And it's the same way with any project that I make. Um, I want my adhesives to work really well. So now we're going to use our pokey tool again. Like I said, one of the most versatile tools in the world. This one is not available anymore. Um, they can't seem to find them anywhere. So um, we have come up with the, the Nouveau um, tools like this and like I told you before one of them does have the pick on it and I'll show you it works just as good as this one so you can use this to poke out your little holes like I did with that one and you can use it to pull your backers up so again th as these you can see this is our final card once I got the shoes glued down and uh, then I, I or popped the um, shoes up on the dimensionals I glued the base of the card down I mean the the mat down to the base and uh, we have our finished product and like I said for the inside I would just put a piece of white cardstock and you can either stamp your birthday sentiment in there if you have one that you like or you can write a personal message either way the card turned out beautiful and I want to thank you all for tuning in I hope this helps you out somewhat on your journey of looking for a masculine card thanks so much for tuning in God bless you until I see you next time bye bye